just say hello and welcome. Welcome to Sales Week here at Hair of the Dog. Um, I want to be jumping on a couple Facebook Lives for you um, so that you can, uh, we can talk about sales. We can talk a little bit about the mindset of sales and the mechanics of sales and all that good stuff because I know that sales can get pretty overwhelming sometimes and I don't want you to be overwhelmed by it because it's really not, it shouldn't be overwhelming. Uh, I know, you know, there's, there's a myth for in-person sales and I think it's perpetrated by, um, you know, sometimes there's, especially in, in other big sales groups, there's sometimes people posting like $20,000 check, this or that, and people are thinking like, oh my God, there's no way I could ever get that, and they just totally shut it down, and they just won't, won't do anything with it, and they're just like, forget it, it's not for me, there's no way, I mean, $20,000 feels incredibly uncomfortable, and I would vomit, and um, yes, I would do that too. I, I have not had a five-figure sale. Um, you don't need to have five-figure sales to have a profitable business. I actually believe that most of our businesses run on the the average, you know, um, a low four-figure average is completely great. Even a $1,000 to $1,500 average would be a great goal and a great, um, you know, average sale that with that, you really can build a profitable boutique business. You know, and then as you start to grow your business, um, you know, then you can start to bump that average sale up to two or three thousand dollars. But please do not be overwhelmed by that. Okay, um, that, that's like the big first step. The second big first step with the kind of myth of in-person sales is that it's going to feel yucky. It's going to feel slimy. You're going to be the used car salesman trying to be like, get one over on your client. And that is not the case at all. I want to reassure you that the best way to approach in-person sales or any sort of selling is from a place of service. If you approach selling from a place of service, then you can't go wrong. And it is not stressful because you're serving your client. You are helping them. You know, looking at all these beautiful images can be completely and totally overwhelming, especially if they're at home trying to do it themselves. And what are they gonna do if they're at home looking at a gallery all by themselves, trying to figure out what it is that they wanna do? They're gonna order a few prints and call it a day. And then you're gonna be frustrated, they're gonna be frustrated, oh well, maybe they'll love their prints, but they would have loved really showing off their images even more. Um, you know, it's just, it's not the best setup. So I really, really encourage you, you guys out there doing online galleries, please tune in for this series this week so we can just really talk about this and, and start to get some different ideas, some different stories built in your head. Um, you know, because of the big first step is really coming up with your beliefs about in-person sales. And beliefs are just beliefs. They are stories you tell yourself. They are not true. Um, you know, one of the beliefs that you say that you might be telling yourself is that, uh, you know, I'm going to force my clients to buy something they don't want. Um, the only way to succeed is to like be really high pressure. None of those things are true. The other story you might be telling yourself too is, oh my God, I will literally pee my pants if I have to show my clients their images in front of them. But what if they hate them? I mean, all right, let's talk about that for a second. What if they hate them? What if they think they're terrible? Do you think they're actually going to look at them and say, these are awful, you're a horrible human being, you shouldn't call yourself a photographer, these suck, I'm out of here, you kick puppies, um, everybody hates you. No, no they won't. Um, they're going to love them. Even if they don't, you know, like worst case scenario, maybe they don't love all of them. Maybe their dog was challenging. They won't understand that. You know, worst case scenario, you can offer a reshoot. Those things aren't going to happen though. People are going to like their images. I promise you that. Um, so happy all of you guys are joining us. Hi guys. Um, so yeah, so please, please, please do not worry about, about that. So don't worry about what your clients are thinking if you're showing them their images. They're going to love them and they're going to be so thankful that you are there to help them sort through them. So then on to belief number two, you have to be high pressure to make any money. That is 100% absolutely not the case. You do not need to be high pressure to make any money. Um, it's important to have your pricing set up with, you know, artfully so that it's encouraging people to purchase what you want them to purchase, but that'll be a series for another time. Um, but the, the high pressure sales thing is not, it's not the case. We are not going to do high pressure sales. 
There's no reason to do high pressure sales. Um, it's not comfortable for you, it's not comfortable for them. This is supposed to be a comfortable, fun thing. So change that mindset that it is not, um, it's not high pressure, it is service. We are helping. So the ways to make it not high pressure. Number one, my clients see their, my, their entire price list long before the sales session. They see it when they book. If for whatever reason they book and you know, like they call and they book right on the phone, I send them the price list immediately after. We've at least talked about averages or um, you know, kind of what to expect. But if for some reason they saw my full price list and they're like, oh my God, I can't do this, I would refund their session fee. No problem, no questions asked. That's just the right thing to do. So number one, they're seeing my session or my pricing long before the sales session. That takes the high pressure number one off. Number two, I'm not gonna sit here and tell them, you know, they have to make a decision. It has to be right now, it has to be right now. Yes, I want them to make a decision that day. Yes, I'm gonna try to set up the situation so they do make a decision that day. And how you do that is educating them, educating them throughout the process. So you educate them by giving them their pricing early so they can look through that. You educate them by your pre-session consult, whether it's on the phone, whether it is um, on Skype, whether it's in person. You're talking about how they want to display their images after the session. You're getting them to talk about that. They're starting to think about that because then they can start to plan for that. It's not a surprise in the sales session. By the time the sales session rolls around, it should really just be like, all right, we already know what you're ordering. Let's pick out our images. This is super fun. Um, so yeah, so that gets away high pressure number two. Um, number three, you know, yes, I want them to make a decision that day. If they can't, I don't force them. I don't have any policies in place that my prices go up after the sales session or that I throw away all the images they don't order. Um, you know, if people do ask me during the sales session, can we come back and order more at a future date? I let them know, yes, I try to keep these images for at least a few years, um, you know, but, but it is digital media, so I can't guarantee that something won't happen to them. Of course, I, I have backups in place, but you know, I'm gonna do my best. Um, but I don't ever want them to think there's an absolute guarantee just because, uh, I don't know, what if there was a horrible backup situation, um, catastrophe. Uh, I have plenty of backups in place to ensure that doesn't happen, but just in case. Um, so that's what I tell them for that. But again, it's, it's, not, um, it's not high pressure, you know. I, I want it to be low pressure, easy peasy service. Hold on, let me check my notes to see what else I've missed here. Um, cause I just went off on a big old tangent. All right. So, oh yeah. One of the other things for those of you guys that are still doing online galleries or you're like kind of scared to take the leap of into in-person sales is what if I told you just by meeting with your client, then, um, just by meeting with them that you might have two to three times bigger sales two to three times, not changing your pricing, not changing anything else, just by being present with them and going over their images. And again, we're not being salesy. We're not trying to push them into other things. Um, I'm gonna tell you on another call this week, basically I'm gonna walk you through one of my sales sessions, exactly how it goes, so that um, you can see exactly how I do this. So it's again, not high pressure. It is all very um, easy peasy. Uh, Jessica says, so true, IPS is a game changer. Um, yeah, Jessica, I know you just started. She started, oh gosh, has it been like a year and a half now maybe? Maybe two years? I don't know, Jessica's fairly new in business and um, she started off, um, she did my business course and started off with in-person sales and a good pricing structure and I mean, started her business making four-figure average sales. So, super proud of you, Jessica, yay! Um, it can be done. Uh, yeah, one and a half years, she says. Um, I firmly believe that any photographer that has, as long as you're technically competent, very important, you need to be technically competent, but if you are technically competent, you should be able to get an average of a thousand dollar sale at a minimum if you have your pricing um, situated and then you have some marketing game going on so that you can find those clients. Um, it's, it's definitely, definitely doable. So if you have other stories going on in your head, Try rewriting those stories. If you guys need help rewriting those stories, let me know. Let me know what your big hangups are here, and um, I can try to help you flip that script and rewrite those stories. Jim says, we love IPS. Can't imagine doing it any other way. We also love to do BYOC, so it's important to us to help, our, to help guide our clients. Oh, build your own collection. 
as you educate them on something no one else near us does. Absolutely, that's how I've started doing my um, pricing as well, is uh, build your own collection. And it's been awesome. We'll talk about pricing another time. Um, oh, it gets loud sometimes. I don't know what's happening. Sorry, guys. Um, Shalina loves IPS and so do her clients. And they're thankful for the service and love the artwork. Absolutely, that's the other key to help rewrite that script, guys. If you're a little nervous about meeting with people, it's again, it's a service and you are helping them be able to love their work. I've had so many clients that thank me for meeting with them um, because, again, looking at all these images on an online gallery and leaving them to make the decisions of how they will best enjoy them is kind of like, you know, taking them basically almost the whole way through, like, okay, here's your wedding cake. I baked it for you and iced it, but you decorate it. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> you know, we want to finish the service for them, which includes helping them you know, create something beautiful with their work.